Good morning and welcome to everyone listening to our service this morning. Our services continue online and via telephone and of course we are now meeting again in our church. We have flowers in the church and if you would like to contribute to our church flower fund you can leave your contribution into number one and I will pass this on to Isabel. On Monday 19th of April we have our church committee meeting at half past seven via Zoom. On Tuesday, Bible study continues with the Reverend David Bryce at 1.45 p.m. Wednesday morning is Hebrew at half past 10, a time for men to get together and all men are welcome. On Wednesday evenings, there will be gathering for prayer at 7 p.m. and at 7.30 p.m. is reflections. Food for care and share can be left in number one on Thursday between 11 and 12 or in the trolley provided in the porch of our church. Saturday morning at 9am is our prayer meeting. Next Sunday the 25th of April the Reverend Laszlo Orban will be conducting our worship in church online and via telephone. If you need the services of a minister while the Reverend Graham is off on sick leave, please contact the Reverend Laszlo Orban on 07 519 030768. If you wish to have an announcement made, can you please send this to the office before Wednesday? These are all the announcements. Good morning. And welcome to our telephone or pre-recorded service from Joy Mind Presbyterian Church from Carrick Fergus for the 18th of April. From wherever you are tuning in, hope you may feel God's presence with us as you are joining us for this online worship. We sadness have to announce death in our congregation, our friend, our brother and and our elder, Mr. Hugh Henderson passed away. May we continue to remain close with his family and be with them in our prayers. In the book of Joshua, this is what we read. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. May we bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this opportunity for gathering together around our phones or different devices. Our Lord, we pray that you would speak to us as we hear your voice. Lord, may we feel the unity as we are all together. And Lord, we praise you for never leaving us or forsaking us. You are always with us. But sometimes, Lord, we don't feel your presence because of our sins. We might feel our sins and wrongdoings are too big to see you and that's why we feel so hidden from you but Lord we pray that as you speak to us in this moment of silence Lord use us and convert our hearts and our sinful lights into real disciples of Jesus so Lord have mercy on us and forgive us free us and forgive us in his name we pray amen let us now say together the prayer that jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Our reading for today is taken from Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians as we are continuing to study this letter. And today we'll be reading chapter 2 verses 19 to 30. So this is God's word. Paul writes, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son of with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it's necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and other people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for a help you yourselves could not give me. Amen. This is where our reading ends. Our first hymn is hymn number 195, To Be in Your Presence. Let us praise God. Good morning children, hope you are doing well, hope you all had a good week at school. I'm sure you are glad to see all your friends and teachers and also doing a bit of a homework and schoolwork too because this is all a lot of fun, isn't it? Today let us have a little chat about doing something nice to others. So what do you like? to do. Hands up if you have done something nice to anybody. You can think of 
during the last week? Well, I hope you raised your hands up because I don't see you here and it's and it's not easy not knowing if you raise your hands up or not, but I really do hope you did. And I really do hope you did something nice. Now, let's just imagine that you're doing something that you really love. I don't know, it could be anything. You could be reading a nice book, or you could be drawing a nice picture, or you could, you could take your dog out for a walk, or you could help your parents, or anything. And then, something might say that, hold on, you, what you're doing here, you need to stop right away, and you need to do something else. Or, what you're doing now, you need to do somewhere else. Would you do that? Could you agree that? See, I love doing stuff. I love preparing to my sermons and different Bible studies. So here's my laptop. I love writing everything down and make notes and all these things. As you all know me, I love fixing my old bicycles. This is a little part that I just recently bought. It's cool stuff and it's quite rare. And I love bacon. Bacon is nice. And I don't want to praise myself here, but just to tell you, but don't tell anybody. For Easter, I made such an awesome special cake that when it was gone, it was gone within a day. And when it was gone, the girls asked me to bake another one. So made another one so I'm good isn't it so what if I would just need to stop doing all these things what I'm doing and maybe do something else I don't know how happy would I be about that because this is for instance if we just think about how Jesus called the disciples they were fishing, doing their old jobs, and they were doing their things, what they've been doing. And Jesus was just telling them, you stop what you're doing, and you come with me, and you do from now on whatever I'm, I'm asking you to do. Would you do the same as the disciples done? And here's another person here, just as we've read in, in, in the reading. There's a man called, or actually two, Timothy and Epaphroditus, hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I think it's a Greek name. And we'll highlight the second one, Epaphroditus. Well, he was a member in a church in the city of Philippi. And the church wanted to send Paul, who was in Roman prison, well, quite a lot of distance. Um, Maybe a little gift or a bit of a money or some nice good goodies or I don't know what was in it. The Bible is not mentioning that. So they needed a volunteer to be the postman to send that parcel. And also they needed somebody to spend some time with Paul just to cheer him up and just to help him. So he was their man. So he volunteered that. I'm here I'm, I'm I'll be going so he got up on a boat and he took a long long journey but then he got sick and he almost died and he wanted to go back home so Paul let him to go and also Paul told the congregation there that you know he's a great man so just honor him and shows respect and love to him because he's a really great guy and he is a really faithful man. So this man has done something awesome, not only for the church in Philippi, but also for Apostle Paul, just delivering that parcel to him, the congregation's gift to Paul, and also for staying with Paul, with Paul for a good while. So for the next week, can you maybe think of what would be the good thing that you could be doing? There's so many varieties. Or maybe just to give you a few, 
few examples or ideas you could help your parents maybe cooking or baking or cleaning up the house or taking up the dog for a walk or or cleaning uh, after your pet or you can maybe talk to a friend at school whom you find that person is a bit lonely and nobody really speaks to her or him you could be the one who's having a chat and cheer the person up you could be friends you never know or you can write somebody a card and put it in, a, in an envelope and send it to your grandparents or to your friends or whoever you haven't seen for a long time so there's so many other things how to care or to show God's love to the people around you so I would like you to focus on these thoughts and let me just pray for you for that so Lord, we pray that you'd encourage all the children here and also the adults to share their faith and to do something nice, something kind to somebody or to many, just as Epaphroditus did as we read in the reading. So Lord, encourage them uh, in this calling. In Jesus' name, hear us and bless them. Amen. Thank you. And now we will sing another hymn. So stay tuned. We will sing hymn number 21. God is good. You know it well. God is good. And now let us bow our heads again in prayer as we give thanks for all, for everybody who are supporting the work of our church and also as we pray for others. So let us pray. Father God, we praise your almighty name. You have provided and blessed us with so many opportunities and chances. So accept our gifts of thanksgiving and bless the cheerful givers and 
Bless these offerings, these gifts that they have given. And Lord, we continue to pray for each other. Lord, especially as we've seen in all over here in Northern Ireland, all the coronavirus restrictions might be eased a little bit. Lord, we just pray for patience and just to follow all the rules. And Lord, we give you thanks for the sunshine, for spring, for a better weather. And then that we, we are allowed and able to meet outside or in our gardens. And Lord, we pray for those who have no families, whom we know that they are alone, they are lonely, or their families live far away from them. If they are ill, they are waiting to be healed or waiting for any hospital appointments. Heavenly Father, be with them and bless them and give them patience. And also call us to be beside them and near them. Make us your messengers. Lord, we pray for Richard as he continues to recover. We pray for a full and a quick recovery for him. May he feel your love and your presence. And also, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen his body as well. And continue to bless Linda and Mark as they are with him. So, Lord, bless them as a family and make them close to each other, but first of all, close to you. Hear us as we pray for the Henderson family. Be very near to them and be with everybody who lost a loved one in the past or in the recent time. Lord, encourage them and may they see what you are offering to your faithful servants. That you are calling all of us to be your disciples and to inherit the crown that you are able to offer us by faith and by your grace in heaven. So Lord, hear us as we Think about those people whom we know and those whom we don't as we brought them before you in our prayers. In Jesus' name, hear us now. Amen. We are continuing to study Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, the letter written in lockdown. And now it seems like Paul is taking a little break. We don't really see many advices from the Apostle for the faith life or towards the congregational life, but he is having a little break here and his mention and he's highlighting two people, Timothy and Epaphroditus. But I think that as Paul is speaking about them, the lives, the faith of these two people could be a real encouragement for us today. There's an old story about a rich guy who threw a party at his mansion and one of his pride and joys was his new salt water pool in which he had the ability to let swim different uh, fishes from the ocean. He had the party assembled along the edge of the pool as he proudly released into the pool his new collection, a great white shark. And as the shark swam back and forth in the pool, the rich man offered one million to anyone brave enough to swim across. Suddenly, there was a splash and someone started swimming across at a speed that never even seen in the Olympics. And a man binded out of the pool on the opposite side, completely out of breath. And the rich man rang to him, 
and began to congratulate him on his courage. And the tired swimmer said, I only have one question, who pushed me? So sometimes we might need a little push to achieve great things. But sometimes achieving great things just comes naturally. And we just simply agree to do these. Well, looking at how Paul speaks about Timothy and Epaphroditus, we, I think we can all agree that these two people didn't really need uh, that sort of push. I think they just simply followed um, God's call in their lives to serve. Timothy's focus was also on God. Paul states like, that unlike many others, Timothy was not seeking after his own interests, but instead of Jesus Christ. Timothy served Paul in the gospel and Christ the gospel were the center of Timothy's life. But let us just highlight the second character a little bit deeper. And even though Timothy is mentioned here, but probably in the way that Paul speaks about Epaphroditus is a bit deeper. He is, he says, he is a true brother, a co-worker, a fellow soldier. And he was your messenger to help me in my need. So what happened? So the church in Philippi, after hearing Paul got in, imprisoned, they have started to pray for Paul and they thought maybe the best way to show their faith towards and their care towards him is just to send him a parcel or probably some money to cover the costs for him in the prison. But who should deliver it? Who is willing, willing to take this long journey? And they needed Somebody not just as a postman, but also to somebody who might have a break from, from their life and to stay with Paul for a certain time, probably a few months or even probably a few years or for the whole time Paul was there in Roman prison as a friend, as a co-worker and also as a support. So Epaphroditus was their man who took up this challenge. And I'm sure it was a very long journey for him. He must have been traveled for, for a few weeks and it must have cost quite a lot as well. But simply we just read that he wanted to go. He just probably simply raised his hand and said, pick me, pick me, I will, I will be going. Wondering why, why him? Probably, or more certain because as he came to faith through Paul's ministry and he as he got to know Jesus as his Savior and his Lord maybe he just simply felt that he owns God and he owns Paul just by simply as a thanksgiving gift and that was the best way to show his thanksgiving and his support so that's why he felt going. So what could be the message for us in 2021 in April from this man or from, from him and Timothy? Well, because I think both of them, they love Jesus. They loved their churches and they loved and supported Paul. So we know him that he loved Jesus. He took his own call very seriously. He knew that what faith meant to him. He knew the sacrifice Jesus done for him also. And in, in return as a faithful gift, he was willing to serve. This is how discipleship works. As Christians, we know what Jesus done for us. And this is what he is calling us to do, to be faithful servants to the kingdom of God. So he loved Jesus. Friends, do you have the same faithful attitude as he did? As he loved Jesus? Do you love Jesus? That you are willing 
to serve and to show your thanksgiving. You also know about him that he loved his church. He knew and he felt a strong faithful unity in his spiritual home, his church, where he felt safe, where he found probably new friends, where they all together worshipped God. And that's how he's willing this, to take this long journey as a messenger of the church, that he's ready to bring their gift to Paul. It's not a coincidence why Paul speaks to him so greatly in verse 25. My brother, co-worker, fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. So he was ready to serve with an honest heart. We can also think, was it worth for him? How much he got paid to do this? Well, probably nothing. I would love the Bible to mention some of these details as well, but it's not mentioned, it's probably it's not important. It was enough for him knowing that he just tried to offer a small something back to God as a gift that came from his heart. If you've ever been on a mission trip anywhere, doesn't matter where, locally or abroad, that's the same thing. That's the same call why Epaphroditus left. You did not get paid for going on a mission trip, right? You volunteered. You've done it from your heart to do, to serve, to show God's love to others. Same attitude here. Elders, volunteers, leaders, helpers in the church, why are you serving? Isn't it that you have the same heart and you have the same call as he did? Because you would love to serve God, your church, because of love. And you feel that by doing this and trying just to give something back as a thanksgiving gift to God and to the people, by serving, by helping by building God's kingdom, showing God's love, and that fills you with joy, isn't it? But sadly, he couldn't stay alongside with Paul for, long, for as long as he planned because he got ill. He got very ill. Actually, he got so ill that he almost died. So Paul decided to send him back and probably not to risk another Ill illness. And as Paul speaks to him, he also got a bit low in his mood. But also, he could send this letter back to his home church, the letter to the Philippians. So on his way back home, he was again a messenger. And the Philippians had thought he would be staying with Paul for a while, maybe taken over from Timothy and ministering to Paul's needs, but it was shorter than planned. He's on his way on a ship home, and Paul says, I think it's necessary to send him back, whom you sent to take care of my needs. Paul appreciated his effort and his time, but this week, this homesick man, am I all more ego, eager to send him back, Paul writes. For two reasons he wanted to send him back. First, because of some emotional difficulties, as I just mentioned, probably he just became homesick. He got weak as he got so, so ill. Probably he got homesick too. So Paul realized that it was time for him to send him back. And also, Paul warns the church, he says that so that when you see him again and you may be glad and welcome him in the Lord with great joy. Paul is preparing the Philippians and when he is arriving home, look after him. And don't just see him that, well, mission accomplished. He went to Paul. Well, and actually Paul has sent a letter, some nice encouraging words alongside with him. who might read it when we are gathered, gathering in the church and that's it. We will thank Epaphroditus for 
offering his services and that's it no Paul is asking the church that he's an awesome faithful person just encourage him and honor him and thirdly we know about him that he wanted to help Paul he knew everything about Paul he came to faith through his ministry in Philippi so once again he wanted to to give something back Paul saw his faith. No doubt he was a faithful man. That's why once again he speaks to him with these words. My brother, co-worker and fellow soldier is also your messenger that you sent to take care of my needs. Paul realized not only his faith but his courage and his willingness that he was there to help him in prison and his faith and Timothy's faith made him famous well famous famous for God and I we don't really know much about them it also could have been someone else who who could have showed willingness to visit Paul but it was him and nowadays it could be anybody to step up and to serve God or just to show your thanksgiving it could be you it could be anything else you could reassure your faith and make maybe a vow again to God as you're already a leader or his servant that yes I would love to continue to serve you God the list is endless there's so many ways to serve to do something nice to somebody and to show your appreciation towards God and towards your church so friends the key message here is very simple they are both examples for us and it's all about faith and by faith that we can serve God and his people even though we are not serving God as we used to before the pandemic but you can do so many things from the background remotely that's why we are looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians a letter written in lockdown Paul is encouraging the congregation remotely very similar thoughts isn't it but at the end just very quickly let's have a look that why did God allow him to become so ill this could be a very difficult question but a theologian just simply said that it looks like God allowed his illness but God also was in control and God also had mercy on him and on Paul and God gave thoughts these Paul God gave Paul these thoughts for realizing that he needs to send him Paul and he sent him back and he also needs to write a few encouragement thoughts about him towards the congregation so he was also the one who brought God's word to the Philippians the letter to the Philippians and I'm sure when they read this letter they were greatly encouraged by God's word that was written down by Paul and that's how we are now as we're studying this letter and I hope and pray that we are also encouraged by this letter and by these examples of faith Amen let us pray Heavenly Father help us to follow these examples in faith and help us Lord to hear your call and when you are calling us to serve to do something nice to show our faith towards people and towards your church then help us to take that step encourage us Lord with this in Jesus name Amen our closing hymn is hymn number 215 Jesus is Lord
And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.